four comedians are also real good friends Working on jokes, the fun never ends They're asking each other, is this anything? Robin, what's true. behind your ear? Oh my god, what? No way, <laughs> no! That's supposed to be mine! I was supposed to have that, this is unbelievable! I can't believe that you- okay. What, what, what the fuck is- pick, What?! I want you to pick a windscreen, don't tell me which one it is, okay? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. I got one. I got one. I got one. I got all one. All right, you picked it? I picked it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Have you seen any like contemporary magic shows? They all now they're putting like these very weird um narratives on top of their magic. So as the guy is doing this trick, he'll be like, I was traveling through Vienna and I met a crying child on a train and the ch and the child looked at me and he said, Was this the windscreen that you picked? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's so funny that you have so many windscreens because um, the one that you're using you didn't put on your microphone properly. So I, well, I, maybe twice. you're overwhelmed by them. <laughs> I tried it twice. Look at Rob's microphone. Look at my microphone, and look at your microphone. Yeah, I don't know what what I did wrong. Like pull pull it down. I did this all the way down. That's. Do you That's see the, the curve? Is <laughs> is his curve? It's fine. He's got a reservoir <laughs> tip on his. Some people like that. <laughs> Jarrett, didn't you practice in health class? I thought everyone. <laughs> yeah. I'm Getting not used lady. to putting it on something this small. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jarrett, take a look at my microphone. Or wait a minute, is it a microphone? Oh my God, it's more <laughs> magic! What? So many windscreens! I knew you would have something. Uh, for our fans at home, I have been in charge of ordering equipment. Um, and the guys have been in charge of not answering my text as to whether they've received it or not. Um, and that's been going on for the last almost month. Um, the final thing Wait, was these windscreens. Did I not get back to you about stuff? Almost never. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> you were the worst offender. I, uh, I, you would get back to me eventually, but it would never be. I'd be like, hey, let me know if the thing comes today. And then two days later, I'd be like, did the thing come? You'd be like, oh, yeah, I got it. <laughs> I have said. Many times, if you need something, reach out to people individually, because if you don't, it will get lost in the group thread. Uh -huh. And so what Brett is complaining about, where he's like, no one gets back to me, that is something that we all do to everybody in this group. This is not a Brett-specific problem. Well, first of all, your microphone screen looks worse Again, now. Again, guys, don't, don't play know what I'm doing true. Wrong. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. Put, put it on. Out. <laughs> put it inside out. Think inside out, inside no. out, it looks a little bit better. That's how many, you have so many windscreens, you're turning them inside <laughs> out now. It looks like it wants to go. Number two, skateboarding. <laughs> it doesn't look like. Number two, your point is that you should reach out to people individually because stuff gets lost in the group thread. I was reaching out to you all individually. That's not true. You put me and Rob on a thread together, <laughs> and it was a huge mistake. <laughs> Well, thanks for coming out, Drew. We really appreciate it. Uh, yeah, this was fun. Thanks for having me, yeah. guys. <laughs> Honestly, uh, you know, anytime. I'll do it again anytime. <laughs> uh, can I do my plugs before I go? Uh, <laughs> no, time. Uh, yeah. Yeah. If it is windscreen related, related, though, you can definitely make your plug. <laughs> I, got, I got some windbreakers I'm trying to sell. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, maybe <clears throat> one. Nope, still looks weird. That's the best it's been, I think. I can't get over <laughs> that it looks like you tried to make it match your hat, and your hat's <laughs> a little... Like, it looks like a puppet of you. <laughs> it's, also, it's weird that you you got a haircut, and then now you won't stop wearing the hat. It's because my haircut's bad. I think, uh, we've I think it's bad. But it's, it's been... Bad, it's been, it's been oh. First of all, it looks great. Second of all, yeah. it's how long is it going to be bad for? <laughs> is that grown in Forever? yet? Forever? I'll show you guys. It does oh, look so good. Weird. I it's love just great. a shorter Trendy. version of what you always have. Yeah. You're on trend. That yeah. is what is popular right now. <laughs> also, the hat looks weird. worse. And if, you guys if, are being nice. I, I know it looks weird. No, we're being mean. Your hat we're, looks dumb. Yeah, we're <laughs> <laughs> Stop wearing the hat. A different look. No. <laughs> I'm not going to make my windscreen feel alone in this apartment. <laughs> The hat fits on your head properly, so it does feel alone. Welcome, guys. We have a special guest today, uh, Mr. Drew Morgan, who is uh, one of the co-authors of the Liberal Redneck Manifesto and the Well-Read Tour and Well-Read Podcast, uh, and also started a, uh, a cult, kind of, over the yeah. pandemic. Oh, how'd you uh, do that? Ooh, that's exciting. I just uh, said we were going to do it as a joke, and everyone thought it was a joke, but it's not. 
Ooh, with that velvety <laughs> voice, I would yeah. join your cult. Hey, oh, you'll you know, have fun. We're just we're just trying to join a cult. We're just trying to do the right thing over here, you know. Yeah. Maybe we hang out. Maybe we all get People naked. Just took Who knows? Each other. You, you, you know? guys ever thought about how cults only the end is the bad part? <laughs> wow, that is a great pitch. Like that is a very not, good pitch. If we're never gonna kill each other, so all we gotta do is just life. never end. Exactly, man. <laughs> just keep eating fruit and fucking. <laughs> uh, the, it is called the the Church of Eat Fruit and Fuck. Uh, yeah, for, see, for reference, what we decided is to have a cult where we get rid of all the pretext, right? <laughs> so, like, you know, it's not going to be called the way or the truth or any of that. It's eating fruit and fucking. That's what we're doing. Oh, that's good. I don't what think I could ever. Uh, I don't like cantaloupe. Is that okay? Yeah. No, that's uh, we, we take all kinds. You know, you have to fuck whatever fruit you don't eat. <laughs> oh, oh well cantaloupe seems like that might actually... cantaloupe's a good one yeah it's i don't like pineapple it's, it's, it's good to eat, you don't eat, like pineapple no, i love pineapple i just oh. said that for the joke <laughs> it's eat fruit and fuck not eat fruit and fuck fruit i just want to make oh, that clear it's true but it doesn't specify it doesn't say you can't it does it, no. yeah, it does as a general fuck and fuck but not fruit <laughs> it's not right. eat fruit and fuck humans yeah, that's you, that's true. I'm just saying, you guys, it just from the way that you were talking, it seemed like you thought it was eat fruit and fuck fruit, <laughs> because you were only talking about fucking fruit. Am I wrong there? Because uh, I didn't need the I clarification. I don't know if you're right or wrong, but Brett's not allowed in. Is he always like this? <laughs> hey, <laughs> no, Brett, you can be like the uh, sergeant in arms, like the, all the rules. We have yeah. Moved. But <laughs> I, I tutor SAT prep and 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 usually when it when it comes to distributing like that verb, I would say eat and fuck, and then I would say the noun, and then that would distribute to both. Okay. The Rob can't be in it either. <clears throat> um, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a comedy show. Uh, and that's all it is. Every other Friday we get together. It's a good time, and uh. we do a Zoom comedy show. And then we are, though, on the podcast, making up a religion to go along with our cult. But that's like, it's mostly possum-based religion. Uh, yeah. Of so, yeah, it's just being weird in pandemic. Why not, you know? I like that. Love it. Possums are great. They eat ticks. Exactly. And they can't get rabies. <laughs> which is apparently important because everyone who I've ever talked to about a possum tells me that. I'm like, was that a big problem with your dogs in the past? Is that <laughs> I put down 30 dogs last year. It's possum. Uh, rabies. <laughs> that possum fact came up in a previous episode that I just yeah. edited. So and Jared yeah. loved flaunting that. Yeah. J Jared I I said it last time. I listened to it and it reminded me of it. And now I feel like Anthony's really low. Um... He's not I'm, talking. That might be it. Yeah. <laughs> Is this better when I chime in? I'm using the new mic cable that Brett sent me. Ooh. How do you like it? It it looks it's good. good. <laughs> yeah, Brett sounds really that good. That was the issue. Was that the old one looked gross. How's this? Is that good? Am I good, Jarrett? Um, you are you asking yourself? No, I'm asking. <laughs> Okay. Rob is the one who had the biggest gripe, so let's ask Rob. The How only time I ever say now? that to myself is when I'm in the fetal position. Am I a good Jared? <laughs> if I'm not in the fetal position, it's to the crowd. Anthony, how about you? Yeah, right here. Still cranked all the way. <laughs> cranked all the way. Yeah, that's uh, his personality. Good. I feel like all I'm the loud. Way. I feel like I'm pretty loud, actually. Okay. Okay, check, check. Drew? I like the painting or picture, whatever is over your head, sir. Mm. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, a little dumb and dumber action. It's called a keyboard. Uh, yeah, it's a printer. <laughs> Ah, I've never seen one of them where I'm from, Brett. <laughs> I think I'm good on the hiss. No if you guys uh, at home are not familiar with, with uh, the liberal redneck, uh, there is a huge bastion of Southern people who have uh, liberal and progressive views. Um, and uh, Drew is a part of a, a trio that, that really uh, has, has kind of spoken to that audience um, and, and those, that group of people. Um, it's really funny when, when Trump first won, uh, Lucy Steiner reached out to me. And she was like, just kind of like, what is what ha what happens now? Uh, and I was like, honestly, I, I don't know. Uh, I was like, you know what you should do? You should go look at Drew's Facebook because Drew has a good beat on like what's going on. He has a good, uh, you know, sense of what's going on in the South. And then like a nice mix of like liberal and, and all of those worlds. I went to look at the Facebook after I told her to do that. And you're supposed to just like, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember that. I made a video, right? Where I was just like, this guy's got his ear to the ground. This guy's level headed. <laughs> Does the video of you burning felt. your house to the ground? Yeah, yeah. it did. Don't do this yeah. anymore. <laughs> it, it was weird. I mean, I think the consensus among folks like us was like, we really didn't think he'd pull it off. Like, it's not like we thought so highly of conservatives. It's just that he's such a silver spoon full of shit douchebag 
that it was just like, well, they just won't vote. That's what I thought. Just, right. They just won't vote. Right. I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to do some checking in? How's everybody doing? We just, uh, we got an apartment, me and, me and Kirsten. Hey, congrats. Very excited awesome. about oh, it. Nice. I didn't know you were looking. We are. Yeah, we had some problems with our management company. We're also just tired of not having a door. We have a duplex, but there's no door between us. So she takes work calls. I do show podcasts. We have to time them very carefully. Sometimes there's overlap. It's awkward. Um, you do have one door, but it's to the outside, and sometimes you can't get through it. <laughs> <laughs> and that one time I did get... Locked out of my apartment, and I entered into a Sisyphean battle with my with my uh, management company to try to get them to let me back into my apartment. Yeah. And so that's part, one of the reasons why we're leaving. Okay. <laughs> I called them on Friday, and I was like, "I'm locked out of my apartment. We're in the middle of a pandemic. It would be great if you could send somebody to get me back in." And it wasn't even my fault. It was the electronic door ran out of batteries. They sent a guy on Monday. <laughs> he just came by. He knocked on the door. He's like, "I just want to make sure you're inside." <laughs> You got paid for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, how about the rest of y'all? What's going on? You see, I uh, said y'all, Drew. That was pretty oh, cool, yeah. right? I make you feel comfortable. <laughs> yeah, nice. Way to code switch. I should really prepare something for this part of the show, because I was talking to Jarrett, and I was like, you know, if I got something, I'll say something. But when you ask me, I just I go blank, and I get confused. And I'm like, oh, I mean, I, I showered today. And I'm like, oh, my God, Rob, why can't you tell a story? Can I share the most embarrassing moment of my artistic career? Yeah. Oh, right. Please. So no. I'm getting hired to do, OK, fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting hired to do real art things now, which is weird because you guys know I don't make high art. Uh, <laughs> I, I, in fact, I'd say you guys are the reason I don't make. Anthony <laughs> <laughs> uh, only makes growth. high art. <laughs> oh, yeah, high uh, right so now. I got hired to make a logo for a company here, Ooh, and we had a cool. meeting yesterday, wherein they pulled up my website to look at my work. Oh no. Yeah, and I have one not safe for work thing on there. One. And that was the one they pulled up, and they said, we like the look of that. Could you do that? <laughs> <laughs> could you take that background there, and could you put that in our logo? And I was like... Um, stained couch. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> Worst moment of my life. What show was that from, that doodle? I, it was from a streamer I watch. It wasn't a comedian, strange mm. enough. It was just plain filth. <laughs> <laughs> it does look cool. Thank yeah, you. it actually looks great. Yeah. I would want that. For that was from the uh, the live uh, nowhere show of Bra Brazers. Brazers. Uh -huh. <laughs> 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 Reminds me of like a uh, Beavis and Butthead. Like that's the vibe. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beavis and Butthead couch. Yeah, yeah I can see why they liked it. Couch. Yeah, yeah, I think it looks hire great. Hire me for all your cum stained couch needs. Yeah. <laughs> this is either a company that makes like cleaning products. It's like, we love this because this oh, yeah. is a problem that everybody has and they need our cleaning products for it. <laughs> or, <laughs> through, that's all. It's, it's a restaurant uh, called Stained Couch and they're not good at English, but they wanted you to advertise that you should come to the restaurant. Speaking of not good at English, there was a, a cart, a food cart that used to be in my neighborhood when I lived downtown that had a big patriotic sign on it, like right above the menu that said, disable veterans. <laughs> disable veterans. Disable veterans. <laughs> and then in, and in pen, there was a D. <laughs> Do you have anything you want to talk about? I got my uh, first Vax shot. So... Oh, oh wow. wow. Very exciting. I have a uh, asthma, so it was finally paying off to be sickly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What, what were all the other times where you wish you didn't have asthma? Uh, sports, I would say mostly. Anytime mm. girls were around, I would say anytime I couldn't breathe, Brett, that would probably be times. Oh, where... okay. <laughs> yeah. So most of your life is. Yeah, uh, I would say. You, you, so you're okay. like even now. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. I got my shot two weeks before my wife. There's going to be two weeks where I'm like, hey, I'm going to go to the bar. Do you want me to bring anything back? And then I'm not going to go to the bar. But you only have the first one, right? Yeah, yeah, I still got to wait. I, she's going to get the Johnson & Johnson in the meantime. I know she is. <laughs> <laughs> I had a sinus headache yesterday, and for like two seconds, I was like, I got COVID after getting that fucking shot. I, mm. I know I did, and this is terrible, and I don't want to be here right now at my parents' house with COVID. They've already had it, so that part was fine. It's not fun. I, mm. I, I had it. So, you know, it's I think like, it's canon, though, time. that you're not going to have the symptoms for like five years, though. <laughs> I was on an old episode. The super fans will know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Deep cuts. 
the Jarrett and his microphone hat. <laughs> It'd be a side podcast They're you guys twins. do? Yeah. <laughs> Which one is Jared and when, which one is the mic? I don't know. Let's say something conservative and see how both of them react. <laughs> <laughs> Took me a minute to get that one, Brett. Mm, fuck you. That's all right. Oh, there's Jared. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the one. Climate change is real. People should be able to vote. <laughs> cool. All right, cool. Jared, what's our order for today? Okay, turn it on the jar machine. ba da ba ba Ooh, it's a McDonald's commercial that goes on for too long. <laughs> uh, our order today is Jared, Rob, it. Drew, Brett, Anthony. Yeah, I wasn't paying attention. I was trying to hear what Rob said. I went. Ba-da, our order today. I'm over it. That was worth going back to. Our order is Jarrett, Rob, Drew, Brett, Anthony. Yeah. Great order. <clears throat> so I have this bit about how commencement speeches should not be delivered by the wildly successful because almost nobody is going to be wildly successful. So Steve Jobs should never do a, a commencement speech. It should just be like a regular person who talks about like what, you know, being a college graduate is. And so I'm trying to figure out if there's a way to fit this into it because I also had this funny idea about valedic- uh, valedictorian speeches, valedictorian are the guys that like guys and girls who, you know, did the best, they had the best grades, you know, but that doesn't make them any better or worse than their, you know, the people that they graduated with, like a valedictorian speech, especially high school Victorian speeches, I find hilarious because they're like, I'm the exact same age as you, but let me tell you what I've learned about life. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I have for that part. Of it. By missing out on it and oh, studying. What's that? Um, By missing out on it and studying. Um, I was okay. I was the valedictorian. Should I abstain from commenting here? Oh, I want to hear. Nobody well, hear I was one of this. 43 people. I definitely didn't have anything to say to the world. You know, like I, I'm just from a very rural area. All of you would have been the valedictorian. If oh, my God. How great would it be if there was like a school that was like all burnouts and the valedictorian was just like the least stoned person? <laughs> That's kind Ooh. of what my high school was like. There was like out of nine. There was only 90 seniors, I think, and like 60 of them graduated. Oh, God. So Nobody cared. Where wow. did you fall in that spectrum? If you can uh, call it that. On it. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on, the, I mean, I wasn't particularly good at uh, math, mm. but, you know, I didn't really struggle with much else. So uh, you got 60 out of 90. I think we had 40 out of 60, the same clip. Yeah. Same rate. <laughs> My school. Uh, the, the valedictorian just had to be kind of okay at school. Yeah, that's what I was. My the girl I dated was a salutatorian. It was like, we're killing it. Let's blow this town. <laughs> we're going to be president and vice president. Did you know that you were going to be valedictorian or was it like kind of a surprise? Like they announced it like, and now a speech from our valedictorian, Drew yeah. Morgan. You're like, oh, really? No, I knew. All I remember is that um, I did something religious for my mom because I knew she wouldn't be mad at me if I didn't. Like I thank God or whatever I said. And then I quoted Dr. Seuss. That's all I remember. <laughs> wow. Problematic. Yeah. Exactly. Be. Problematic. It's be- depending on which book. <laughs> oh, I've quoted all the racist the ones. <laughs> I just showed. Go the down pictures. the Mulberry Street. <laughs> I didn't really quote Dr. Seuss so much as describe a couple of ethnic images. <laughs> Paraphrase. Oh, look, look at that Asian guy. Look at him. Look at him. He's wearing the hat. Yeah, yeah, he's somebody gets it's my favorite book. book. I'm just paraphrasing my favorite <laughs> children's author. <laughs> um, did you have you ever done, Jarrett? Uh, you know, have you ever given us an example of what I don't know? Mary the waitress or Bob and Tech would what would their speech Oh be? for for the commencement speech. Yeah. Oh yeah. for the oh for notes for the actual joke. <laughs> yeah. Oh sorry, is that Oh not... yeah, sorry, we don't do yeah, that. It's yeah. a bit of a faux pas. <laughs> when you guys, when you guys heard well, the that, no, I, I, I sort of skipped task. over that part a little bit because that part's already written and the, so the part that I wanted to expand okay. upon was the valedictorian speech and see if there's a way that I could fit those two together. Okay. Um but if I can remember it correctly, I've never I, don't, I haven't performed it live in such a long time. It does a lot of like bait and switch where it's like, you know, uh, when I left here, I, I didn't know what I was going to do with my life, but I, but I just knew that if I worked hard and I, and I was honest, that I would succeed. And so I attempted for a while and uh, got hit by a couple round of layoffs. And um, you know what I decided? I was like, I'm not following my passion. And so I bought myself a digital camera and I took pictures every single day. And you know, that's a tough industry. Like I, I was having a hard time getting eyeballs on my, uh, on my Instagram, you know, it's, it's like a whole other hustle, you know, just like trying to get people to look at your stuff, you know? So anyways, 
the other day I ran into uh, this woman who's a friend of my mom and she got me a job at an accounting firm. <laughs> <laughs> so study hard, work, work hard. <laughs> And if anybody can give me a ride back to New York, that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, That's great. We're, we're, we're turn it back around. Jared, I may as well just jump in and say that <clears throat> uh, I was valedictorian of my college, my university at Stony Brook. Oh, my goodness. Um, was anybody and... on the podcast who wasn't valedictorian? <laughs> uh, Jared, apparently, is the dum dum. Nope. <laughs> I was sitting in the back. Lady, you don't have a high school, okay? You, <laughs> your, your school shut down like two years ago. <laughs> I was spinning <clears throat> records in the back. I was too cool. <laughs> <laughs> and I was not uh, awarded a speech that was not like part of this Stony Brook thing. You had to, yeah. You, you, like, like, so the way they did it, which makes, I guess, some sense, but not really. Uh, Are you sure you were really the valedictorian? They didn't just tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna give we're gonna give this speech to somebody else. <laughs> ah, okay. It was his, it was his make a wish to do. <laughs> Well, we do a new thing. But jokes the on them. I never died. I never died. So, <laughs> never I got died. my wish. We're doing a new thing with the valedictorian this year, Rob. We're putting them. We're we're putting them in a soundproof booth, and we're closing their eyes and around in a circle a whole bunch. <laughs> Uh, but I did get a a joke off that I t I just it's one of my proudest to this day. I mean, I'm a graduate with like three thousand kids. I mean, it's a university. It's huge. <laughs> so uh it's raining out it's very cold nobody's happy nobody wants to be there uh we thought it was gonna be a nice fun graduation in may but it just turned out to be dreary and miserable so we're walking and the person who is allowed to give the speech gives the speech because they like they, they wrote in an essay or something like you had to apply for it um i there was one of the kid that also had a 4.0 so we like were co-valedictorians and uh then they did give me like a plaque and so when I got up, they're like, and the valedictorian, uh, Rob Ryan, they'll clap. And then they give me the plaque and the microphone's right here. And I grab the plaque and I go, speech. <laughs> 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 it's like 3,000 kids are like, boom, no. <laughs> I was like, speech? <laughs> That's perfect, Rob. Right? That is such a good example of how willing you are to be the, the butt of a joke. To have 3,000 people think you're a fucking narcissistic asshole and boo you just for your own your own laugh. Better. Better than better getting than a speech, speech you given. So much better than just getting... Speech, no! I believe, I believe in my heart that if you had been given the option... If they were like, you can do a speech or you can do this hilarious joke and everyone will boo you, you would have picked the joke. <laughs> You're like, nobody knew me. It's huge. I kind of felt like you did. There was a pretension to it. I'm like, nobody knows who I am. Why would they want to hear me talk? Mm -hmm. I didn't want to hear the other person talk, you know? Uh, could yeah. I get one more story out? Let's do it. This is Jarrett's turn. Uh, so <laughs> Chuck, <laughs> Chuck Schumer is our guest speaker. <clears throat> and he gets up there and again, rainy, miserable. And he gets up there. He's got this big old thick, you know, piece of paper, uh, a bunch of papers. And he goes, he's like, I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to give you guys a speech today, but you guys are great. You guys know what you're going to do. You don't need to hear from some old guy like me. And he starts tearing up his speech. Go ahead, you know, live your lives, work hard. You're great. Everyone's like, yeah, four more years. Like we just love Chuck Schumer. And we're like, yeah, that guy's awesome. No speech. And friends of mine who graduate with me, like they love that and they still tell that story. My brother, Steve, is uh, good friends with this kid, Nick, who was like Chuck Schumer's like assistant for many years, just books all of his flights, all stuff. Now he's like his head fundraiser. So the guy's been working for Chuck Schumer for like over a decade and I'm hanging out with them and I'm telling this story. I'm like, oh yeah, Chuck Schumer, he, you know, did the Stony Brook uh, speech thing, but he didn't give the speech. All he does, he just, it was raining. So he tears the whole thing up and blah, blah, blah. And the Nick's just like, he does that all the time. And I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> and he was like, yeah, yeah. So he, sometimes he books like five schools. It's ridiculous. He can't get to all of them. And so he just does this, he tears the tear thing and he goes to the next school. <laughs> <laughs> it does it if it's raining, if it's bad weather, if he has to catch a flight. He does it all the time. What a psycho. It's not a bad way to make 30 grand or however much they pay. 
I, tr- I tried to do that with a stand-up set, and people were not having it. <laughs> You're great. You know, <laughs> they wanted me to come up here and tell jokes, but you guys are the, You guys know what funny is. You know how to laugh. <laughs> You're going to do it for the next 10 minutes. Oh, nine. Nine more minutes. <laughs> All right, sorry for all that uh, diversion. Sweet. Joke's great, Jarrett. Thank you. Thank you. No, uh, I mean, this was worth it just for the addition of I was studying while everybody else was partying and actually living. I mean, the first thing that some, you know? that I said before anybody even gave a note, that was, and then it was just stories. You're like, yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah, but everybody else has any other ideas, you know, well, before we move on. I don't I'll want definitely to hear, hear from them. anyone 18 about anything other than partying. And that's the mm-hmm. one kid who doesn't know anything about it. That might be an angle there. It's like the only 18 year old I'm interested in talking, or the only thing I'm interested in talking to 18 year olds about is partying. Where are the drugs or whatever? And that's the only kid there who doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's the best yeah. that you have as a young person. What's cool? What's hip? Where are the parties at? How do you get drugs? Yeah. And the one person who doesn't know how to do any of those things. <laughs> yeah, that's the only thing young people know that I don't. Yeah, God, that's hysterical. <laughs> and he does that's so funny. Uh, it'd be funny if he starts giving like advice from life experiences and he's like, and that's something that I learned from talking to you guys <laughs> and you telling me about it. <laughs> yeah. That's I once really knew a guy. It was Dan. He's right there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, there was a man who gave me some really good advice. Professor Andrews. I mean, you guys all got the same advice from him. We were all in class together. <laughs> yeah. We I, I all have the same life experience. Yeah. Any chance you can to put, you know, put the narrative in there would be so good. Mm. Uh, like where, where did this person learn that lesson? Uh, you know, so, you know, I was in the cafeteria and you know, just all these things, obviously it's so insulated anyway. Mm. Maybe if it's like, uh, if it's, if you make it specifically somebody who's kind of like a loser and was bullied, like if you're like, you know, I was being hung upside down over the railing in the staircase and you guys were twisting my nipples and I had this realization. <laughs> <laughs> I used to meditate. I used to meditate inside my own locker after being uh, shoved in there by, yeah. by the football team. <laughs> I would be interested in that speech. If a kid just got up there and shit on everybody, it's like, look at me yeah. now, bitches. <laughs> it's like, and Billy, you're an idiot. You'll never get out of this town. Look at your dad. Is he even here? That's what your life's going to be like. You've already got two kids from two different women. <laughs> Meanwhile, I got into Stony Brook, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of did happen at my school, although our valedictorian got up there and exposed how much our headmaster made. She showed oh, wow. his, his salary and then walked off. I love it. Whoa. It was love insane. It. He retired the next year. <laughs> what Aww. kind of school has a headmaster other than Hogwarts? A very pretentious one. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I is went it, to a real fancy school. Yeah, is I was going to say, did she pull up how much her parents paid for her to go there? Like, <laughs> <laughs> is that a type of school that has that, or is it just your specific school? Just a private school. We have headmasters, yeah. Oh, well, which house were you in? <laughs> Red Cycle. <Cypher. laughs> <laughs> 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 private no. school. You mean private? Like, uh, no one can see you when you're there? I don't understand. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not okay i was a valedictorian but i'm not an idiot all right well that's why i know i didn't think you were until you said what's a headmaster <laughs> i didn't say, I, I said what kind of school has a headmaster all right. no I've, I've been to like i performed at uh a quaker school and it was called friends high school and it was just like a super weird format for a school and the kids were wonderful they were all genuinely the entire class was all friends with each other were all supportive of each other it was like it was bizarre it was like uh, almost utopian um they were they, they were have great. like six houses joey phoebe rachel <laughs> <laughs> did nobody else think it I was called it. friends i, I don't know friends. i was I, we, we laughed the... at it I was hung up on the Quaker thing. I was yeah, trying, I was to, trying to think of a, some kind of oat joke. I was trying to think of an oat joke too. <laughs> I was wondering. You know, guys, you could just listen to my story. <laughs> oh, how about oatmeal? Uh, wait. Uh, no, I was listening. I didn't. Just the word "friends" doesn't make me think of the '90s television show. It's a word. It gets used a lot. But it was called Friends School, right? Friends High School. Friends High School. Mm. That's what they call their churches or their, or their gatherings, right? Mm. Oh, right, I didn't Quakers. know that. I, I like the joke, Jared. Sorry. Thank you. Friends at Friends High School, the valedictorian yeah. gets up there and he's like, uh, no one told you life. <laughs> All right. Perfect. There we go. That's very good. I forgot All about right. the claps, and for a second I thought you clapped for your own joke. <laughs>
<laughs> Man, it was good. But wow. <laughs> uh, I had one more thought uh, mm-hmm. going off of Brett's. Uh, this is a loser who got who got bullied a lot. Um, so he goes up there and he's like, what is a purple nurple? Urban Dictionary <laughs> defines it as... <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Hey. I can't wait to find out what sex is like. Is how we end that. <laughs> Next up, we've got Brian. Oh shit! <clears throat> I wasn't paying attention to the order again. I've got one bit idea. Hopefully, we distract ourselves as much as we did for Jarrett's, so that we can stretch stretch my section out. Because you don't have an idea. Because <laughs> I. <laughs> so here's the idea: the history of science is great to to look up and to dive into it's so fascinating to know what humans were able to accomplish hundreds if not thousands of years ago history is horrible to look up it and it's just so bizarre to me that both these things exist like you can look back to isaac newton and be like oh my god 1687 this guy invented physics and calculus all in one paper and then you're like and we were burning witches uh, <laughs> just right across the pond. Just there, just a bunch of women who were just acting up, and we we lit them on fire. Uh, but uh, and meanwhile, uh, yes, uh, we were finding the areas under curves. Um, and <laughs> wonderful work. That's One may wonder if uh, the motivation was informed from one the other where Isaac Newton's like, man, I really got to figure out science. So they stopped doing this <laughs> <laughs> before they burn my aunt. <laughs> yeah. What you think you can come up with some kind of method where we can figure out if someone's a witch or not. <laughs> We've already got that. <laughs> Josephia. <laughs> we, we throw them in water. <laughs> I want to hear Rob for this bit. I want to hear, I just, I read that book. Um, uh, I think it's called like Our Better Angels about how uh, violence has declined in human history. And there are so many incredible examples of of the violence that was completely fine in the past, where they'd just be like, you know, a town square, people are going about their business. And uh, in the middle of the town, there's a robber who they're impaling slowly on a spike and just like crying out in pain. And everyone's like doing their shopping. And like, oh yeah, don't steal kids. Cause that could be you. Right. You're right. You know? It's insane. And so I want to see in this joke, more of that, you know, being drawn and quartered, things like that. Well, yeah. Engineering. Oh, yeah. I think you're talking about Jared. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Somebody comes up with like an engineering thing. Then someone uses it. Yeah. <laughs> you're, like figuring out the area and all that. And you zoom out yeah. somehow in the joke. You can exert it's... a lot more pressure. If you use this pulley system, that's great. <laughs> that's I could great. use that to take someone's head off. <laughs> You, you could, like, why are you using wood to burn her at the stake? You should use coal, bituminous coal. It, it burns longer, faster, hotter. What are you doing? Uh, Brett and I were, had a phone call the other day where we discussed, and this isn't the one I was going to do today. I don't even think I'll ever do this joke. But you think about it's like something about like they find dinosaurs. They sound crazy. Like, like maybe not to other scientists, but I think a problem with the science, you're making all this progress in your lab. You can't tell people because you will be burned at the stake. You oh, know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like back in the you day, discover electricity. <laughs> yeah. It's like I can control energy, and they're like, "What the fuck did he just say?" Right, <laughs> dead now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I was thinking about that when you said that uh, the other day. Uh, just like the you, you were saying, the first person to discover dinosaur bones because science which is always great, but it was a little more loosey goosey and kind of a little bit more of a boys' club back in the day. So I just like the idea that this guy is afraid to bring in a dinosaur bone because of the peer review. They're just gonna like roast him. They're like, "Oh yeah, big birds, dude." Fuck <laughs> Fucking, that's great. <laughs> I cured polio, but I'm sure your mom's proud. But anyway, just like the idea that whatever they're doing in science, Rob, because they're burning people, they can't talk about it. Like, yeah, Newton could tell his friends, but he didn't want to tell the Vatican what he was doing. Right, right, right. Exactly. Was it uh, Copernicus who figured out that the Earth revolves around the sun and not vice versa? And then the Catholic Church put him on trial for that? It was him or Galileo? Galileo. Yeah, sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was excommunicated, right? I think so. Or he recanted, I forget. It was like, uh, I'm going to say this to save my life. It's kind of cool to think of the danger element for a scientist where he's like, I wonder if there's like an even measurement of speed when I drop this ball through the air. Could get killed for this. Like he's like an action hero. <laughs> <You know? laughs> there's a guy named uh, Hippasus 
uh, who discovered irrational numbers. So he had like, he discovered like radical two. It was kind of believed in, in, in Greek, Greece that, uh... <laughs> whoa, that lick was radical. <laughs> Uh, and the Greeks believed that all numbers could be expressed as a ratio, but radical two couldn't. And Hippasus is like, I don't know about this. And uh, as legend has it, he was murdered. He was just killed. <laughs> They're just like, fuck irrational numbers. No, sir. And they threw him overboard and he drowned. Him. For being a radical. <laughs> so the moral of the story where it came from yeah exactly for, so. for both of them is like if you figure out something science that's new uh that was not a good sentence if you f figure out something science wise that, that is new um figure out how it does something really cool before you tell people yeah otherwise they'll kill you yeah or just like uh give your assistant the credit at first you know <laughs> like, hope, hope your scrolls and books are discovered yeah. later maybe that's why all those women were being burned <laughs> just a bunch of asshole husbands like i don't know how she did it <laughs> made the door go up on its own meanwhile he invented the garage that's all i had <laughs> maybe there's like scientists who would get like everywhere except for the last little bit and then they tell their their assistant, she's like, "Do me a favor, look through the microscope for me, would you? Just tell me, tell me if that's penicillin or not. Did you <laughs> cover anything? <laughs> oh my God, you did that! That's incredible. <laughs> she's a witch, everybody. Get her. <laughs> <laughs> I like how people back then, like they wanted to be ahead of their time. They're like, oh, I'm ahead of my time. Ah, I'm just gonna die. A nice, simple death. We'll find <laughs> my my books later and be like, oh, wow, did you know what he was doing? secretly <laughs> we joke but there is oh, i can't think of the person's name but there's another person just like this um who was pretty good with the science and the maths but um he figured out it. some sci what did i say <laughs> Some <laughs> science that we yeah, have. Something good. He, he, he found the science <laughs> he, he, he in the woods. The science that was new. <laughs> when you do good with the science, you do good. You know science when you discover that, science, no one's ever seen the science before. <laughs> I was hiking the other day. There's the science all over this place. <laughs> Look at that. Look at the corner. There's some science. Ah, uh, that's old science. We saw that science yesterday. Oh, I know, but look. <laughs> when you blow up the dust, Ooh. that's new science. Oh my God! There's science inside me right now. <laughs> I've seen so much potent science before. <laughs> I was God, I man. was not valedictorian. <laughs> Did you go to school? No. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't fail if you don't try. Yeah. <laughs> Speech. <laughs> but there's a guy who I'm sure this is repeated a few times where that is the story. Like like this person had some things and I have, I have to look it up for you guys. But yeah, he didn't want to come forward with it. It was almost like I don't, what, what do I want to get excommunicated? <laughs> like, that's crazy. Why would I come forth with, with this stuff? This is, this stuff's too new. Forth. Mm. So think about how many <laughs> great scientific discoveries people uh, just kept secret because they're like, nah, I don't want to die. <laughs> <laughs> think about how great the world would be right now. <clears throat> Not much has changed though. Really. Not much We're has talking changed. about this like as if it's ancient, you know, yeah, but like, very true. Um, look at how people talk react about... to chemtrails. You know what? Why do they, thought, yeah, why do they, I was they like, ignore the truth? Be like, global warming is not real, and everybody. <laughs> well, no, but if you if you just look on you know online Facebook and Twitter and stuff about uh, how, how people are talking about Fauci, when he's all he's doing is reiterating very old science. Yeah, which is, uh, <laughs> people are sick. How about a mask? And people are like. What? Nah, <laughs> or they'll be like <laughs> off with his head, <laughs> or, or, or like you know, as we learn more about how how the virus works and stuff, people are like, it's like he's making it up as he goes along. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's. I'm pretty sure it's, that the the guidelines are changing because we're we're learning what works and what doesn't work. But they're like, where's he coming up with this stuff? <laughs> it's a conspiracy. <laughs> that those are the people that would have burned him i, I bet he <laughs> he probably thinks he just finds science in the woods <laughs> anthony you're like starting to that. sound more like a witch <laughs> what i sound you're, like a witch yeah you're starting to sound a lot like a witch uh you know, i did watch now, watched probably. elvira last night that could be it <laughs> um I somehow a... just by looking at anthony knew he would say that sentence i don't know <laughs> there was what, a, about when... elvira yeah, I've never like that would surprise me. I think coming from anybody except maybe you and like one other guy. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
when I was a kid, my mom <laughs> took me to see that in theaters, actually. Oh, yeah. So I've, I've seen it many times. Uh, Love uh, witches. Uh, Big fan I, of witches. My dad went to a costume party once with a, with a couple of friends of uh, him <coughs> and my mom, and one of, the, one of the girls had an Elvira costume that was, like, way too low cut for her, and her boobs was falling out. And so my dad offered to trade with her. And so my dad went to the party as Elvira, and there's, like, a bunch of great pictures of him. Oh, wow. That's story. such a nice story. Yeah. Also, uh, what I was going to say earlier about the mask thing, about Fauci, I liked it better. I liked it when he came out with a thing where he was like, you know, two masks actually works really well also. And people were like, oh, why not five masks? Why not a hundred masks? <laughs> All right, why don't you just marry your dog? <laughs> <laughs> These were the same people that when, when uh, double knotting first became a thing for sneakers, they're like, how about 16 knots? <laughs> well, that's enough, enough. Someone, someone was making this point on Twitter. like They were like, do people freak out like this about seatbelts? And then you go read the comments, and everyone was like, yeah, my papa yeah. refused it. He said he was going to tuck and roll if he ever got in a wreck, and that's why he wouldn't wear a seatbelt, because he couldn't wow. do the tuck and roll. Yeah. Like, and I, like, There was some comfort in that, though, to know that like grandpas have always been grandpas. They're just on the internet now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love the, the tuck and roll, because the problem is not necessarily – being ejected from the car it's being crushed <laughs> by your car exactly he walks like, he walks by a 20 car pile up he's like should have tuck and rolled it's like mangled bodies see jared gets it dummies he's like trapped under the steering wheel and he's like tuck <laughs> every accident it. he imagines is just like he's driving along there's about to be an accident <laughs> <laughs> Fuck my family. Good luck, son. I like that people are like they forget the, the resistance of seatbelts. But when we were growing up, you know, 80s and 90s and stuff, they had to make public service announcements to get people to wear seatbelts. You know, those crash test dummy uh, yeah, cartoons yeah. and stuff like like that was because people were like, nah. We don't like this new technology. Yeah, yeah, they were like tyranny. This is bullshit. <laughs> when does it end? And then they and what do you guys think we're going to be super stubborn about when we're old men? Robots. Yeah, I think robots are going to oh, be yeah. thing. I'm going to be so our brain chips. We've been waiting for robots forever. We're not. I don't think it's going to happen like uh, like on the Jetsons. Well, maybe you have, Anthony, but I'm not looking forward to it. I'm going to be racist <laughs> towards them. <laughs> I'm not going to let my daughter marry a robot. That's no, disgusting. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of funny. It's like uh, the, obviously medicine, like that would be like a, a place where they're much better at surgery and stuff like that because of the fine tuned stuff. And we're like, no, no, no. I'll just have this 83 year old guy I trust do it. <laughs> He'll do my heart surgery. <laughs> I like, like how a Tesla I... doctor. <laughs> when you get racist about one thing, your racism about the previous thing goes away. So there's going to be a bunch of rednecks that are like, I'm not letting no robot cut into me. Give me an Asian. Yeah. <laughs> well, rednecks have already you know, adopted Asian doctors. But now they, it's like they brag about it. Trust me. In rural America, they'll be like, well, my doctor's last name is Wang. And people will be like, oh, shit. So, <laughs> oh, you got a good job. Mm -hmm. That's that's Excellent. hilarious. You know, um, uh, when uh, Einstein came up with the uh, general relativity, which, you know, has changed the physics landscape for forever. This is like uh, the third time I pretended to know what you were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show, buddy. <laughs> Go ahead. <now. laughs> he... Uh, he he doesn't he doesn't get like a Nobel Prize for it, um, even though the entire physics community is like, well, obviously this guy just you know changed everything. Uh, but he also did some work on the photoelectric effect, which is like when you put metal in the microwave and sparks fly off. So it's like, oh yeah, it looks like uh, light can also you know knock off free electrons from a thing. And they were just like, give it give it to him for that. <laughs> it's like even the science community is like, we can't just be. This is a little out there. This is a little much <laughs> for us to be. We don't even know. We don't. You just changed reality. You're saying that space and time bend. Like that's crazy. Was it the same here? Was it the same year? You said, or was it like a makeup call? Uh, I think I, don't, I have to double check. I think it was a makeup call. I think it was one of those things where it's like Even we can't. Inside. We don't. It's very much yet. like when Denzel got the Oscar for Training Day. Dude, yes. that's exactly <laughs> the thing I was going to mention. Or I was going to mention Morgan Freeman for a uh, uh, Million Dollar Baby. Uh, just be like, yeah, we should have given it to you a while ago. Shawshank, whatever. But here you go, Million Dollar Baby. That was good. People like that movie, right? <laughs> DiCaprio, in my opinion, he got it for the bear, right? Is that what it's he called? He got it for the, the bear, bear, yeah. 
The bear. That was a good the bear movie. Missed out. The bear. You mean the, the revenant? The revenant. It was not called the bear. It was called the bear, guys. <laughs> was, Look at yeah. him. You we guys were, said it uh, so confidently. Well, we're both. It was like, was it called the bear? And um, then one confident, yes, the guy, the bear. He was like, yeah, it's called the bear. It's called the bear. Well, when I asked, was it called the bear? I was asking the other valedictorian. So I wish the rest of you working on a speech. <laughs> uh yeah <clears throat> um but yeah so even yeah everyone's reluctant to change it's pretty pretty remarkable um one more fun fact about einstein he was pretty cocky he was going to get that Nobel prize though he knew it was coming that when he got divorced from his wife the, the settlement was he's that to give her the the Nobel prize money that he that he had yet to win so that was that was a, that was a baller move <laughs> <laughs> he's like give her the money you're like for what he's like the, the Nobel prize i'm gonna win just give her that <laughs> and then i want out of this fucking marriage so i can marry my cousin uh, which he, also been, he was a live. genius <laughs> <laughs> it would have been so much funnier if he like bought a car he couldn't afford he had to take it back <laughs> <laughs> what are you working on I gotta work on something good <laughs> I, got, I got car payments <laughs> I got a really young girlfriend I can't afford <laughs> I gotta start inventing more things really heavy objects will bend time but a convertible will get a girl to look at you <laughs> <laughs> or your cousin to look at you <laughs> but hey it's all it's all relative <laughs> good night that's my time guys uh i feel like we didn't address the dichotomy that you originally brought up which was uh advance in science versus like di directly at the same time the just the absolute opposite of of uh embracing science but uh we had a good time during your turn yeah i, I loved it too there. this is talking great. about all the violence in the past yeah that was good oh, hey, was i good. think we got some dichotomy in there brett yeah yeah. Uh, yeah, okay, true. <laughs> <laughs> you can say the word too. <laughs> a little bit of, we we discovered knows. some dichotomy. Yeah, we did. It. I dichotomy, you dichotomy. <laughs> you know, all this dichotomy. I don't know. I found out track all of a sudden. It's weird. It's like a contest. <laughs> all six of us. I feel like we hexa-dichotomied here. Yeah. We've got at least three dichotomies on this show. <laughs> we were dichotomying. We found yeah. some science. It was yeah, great. I had an aunt who got a dichotomy. They said she was crazy. I think she was bad. <laughs> <laughs> Drew, you're up. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, I, as, this was torture, by the way. I can't believe you do this every week. This is like, <laughs> I put so much pressure on myself. Uh, there's one that I really, really have wanted to do for a long time. So I've come here for help. Um, I have a joke about honesty and the truth and about how everything we know about it's a lie. Just a quick part of that. My favorite part of it is like, uh, I get into Miranda warnings. So I'm like, uh, everyone says the truth will set you free. Guys, I used to be a defense lawyer. The truth very much will not set you free. In fact, it's so bad to tell the truth that in my world, we invented a whole set of laws to keep you from telling the truth. Anyway, I don't want to do the whole thing, but it's like, there was Miranda warnings. Who was Miranda? A bitch who wouldn't stop telling the truth. Don't fucking tell the truth, guys. <laughs> so that's the basis of that bit is that people don't like honesty and they tell you lies about honesty. They tell you they want the truth. They tell you true stuff is funny, but it's all lies. I have another idea that I think I can marry to that, which is that, and it's related to me being an honest person, uh, almost to a fault. Like, I think I'm honest to a fault and I've had to stop being that way in my thirties. And it's about how, um, I don't think I'm a nice person, but I think I'm a good person. And I really, really want to talk about the differences of that and why one's more important than the other. And the only joke I've ever gotten out of it, I opened with it for a little while as a challenge to get something out of it. And the only thing I ever got out of it is like, I'd open with something, I'm, I'm not a nice person, but I'm a good person. And a few people would clap and I'd be like, okay, we got some assholes in the crowd. Exactly. Like, like I'm not saying I'm a, I would give all of you the shirt off my back. I would, wouldn't hesitate. And then the rest of the day I would be like, Hey, where the fuck is your shirt though? <laughs> like you knew we had to have shirts and I wouldn't let it go. I wouldn't just be like, like somebody, my wife would be like, just let it go. No, I'm not letting it go. He's a fucking grown man. Where's his shirt at Andy? <laughs> What I would like to get into, and maybe you guys can help with this, is like the, this idea comes from like how polite the guy taking your house is. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, like niceness has become a substitute for being good, and it drives me fucking nuts. It drives me nuts in comedy. People will be like, oh, yeah, I worked with that guy. He's super nice. He's a great person. And I'm like, 
we all know he's not a great person. You know, <laughs> we don't have to get into comedy, but you know what I'm saying? Like nice has become this weird, I don't know. It's almost like we're all sociopaths because of manners. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I dig this vibe and I definitely relate to it a lot. Uh, well, something that totally- As a sociopath. Yeah, um, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> something that totally frustrates me is when people mask- um, uh, they use kindness to mask doing something that's not necessarily kind. For example, if, if I uh, I get some water down my windpipe, right, and I start to cough, uh, somebody would be like, are you okay? And I'm like, mm-hmm, and that's fine. And then if I keep coughing, then they'll keep making me answer if I'm okay, which is really right. annoying when I'm trying to get the water out of my windpipe. I just right. need to cough. <laughs> you've I know you've been in this situation. And then if I'm like, I, I'm fine, and they're like, why are you getting mad at me? I was just trying to help. <laughs> Yeah, and to me that so th there's some kind of similar thing there. The, the, this this kindness that isn't necessarily kind uh, definitely vibes with me, um, and I really in, enjoyed that aspect of the joke. I would definitely love to hear like a specific example of something that's changed for you in your 30s. If you're going to mention that, like, okay. uh, it, can you can you imagine a time where you normally wouldn't have been would have been nice, but recently in their, your 30s, like, yeah, I mean, I'll think about it. I guess it. I guess what you're getting at is talk about how me learning that people didn't want honesty. This is why I think the jokes can be married. I had to learn that people don't want honesty. And that lesson also is what made me realize, oh, like people like these lies. People like politeness and they want that more than they want the truth. Mm. And that's sort of where I think the jokes and yeah, I mean. So would it, would it help people prefer a white lie over to the, over the truth? Yeah. That a, might har a harsh truth? Well, one one thing I had early on was a very dumb example of like, just to get the joke going to try to get people on board of, of like uh, when someone asks you how they look in something, or if they ask you if they're good at something, you know, they want to be good at. It's not that funny, but it's, it's, a, that's almost like a premise really. It's like, okay, I see where he's going with this, but I really, I couldn't come up with anything else. Like the honesty part of it's good, but I just feel yeah. like there's something there. It's th like a very big thing. I think everybody has had that experience of like, you went to go see your friend at his poetry open mic yeah. and he was terrible. And then he asked you how it was. And what did you tell him? <laughs> right. No? And then what did that lead to? Yeah. Uh, and, and I mean, and then you can give an example in, in that. Okay. So one uh, example I have in the honesty side, and again, maybe I just need to make this all one joke and talk and just pick either honesty or niceness. You know what I mean? Um, sorry if I, if it sounds confusing. I have a, I have an example of that in, in the honesty bit that might be able to, that might be the connection which is uh, I talk about how my mom taught me to be kind and my dad taught me to be honest, but no one taught me how to deal with how often those two lessons will clash in the mm -hmm. world. So when I was younger, I'm my mom's son, right? So we're eight years old and we're all getting these letters. Do you want to be my boyfriend? Do you want to be my girlfriend? Check yes or no. You get a few no's, you get one yes, everybody's happy except for my friend, Mikey. Mikey got all no's and he asked us why. And I was like, I'm my mom's son. I'm kind, I'm eight. I just made up some lie about girls being gross and stupid and Mikey's still fat and he still didn't get his teeth fixed and he didn't <laughs> fix any of the reasons I could have given him for why he didn't get a yes. <laughs> then you fast forward to college and uh, you know, you're there in college, it's freshman year, people are starting to hook up and your friend Chad is like, man, I haven't hooked up with anybody. Why haven't I hooked up? Well, now I'm my dad's son. Now I'm an honest person. And I look at Chad and I go, because you're a fucking pussy and girls can smell it on you and they don't like it. So you need to man up and he does MMA now and we're not friends, but he has a wife. So, <laughs> but the end of that trying to get back to people not wanting it is how I realized that my dad doesn't have any friends. <laughs> like that's why I have to change. It's like, I don't want to be like my dad. My dad is the most honest person I've ever known. He's also very lonely. That's great. I uh, love that dichotomy. Like you got to find the, the balance between having friends and, and being honest. Uh, an idea for marrying those two ideas, because you started talking about the Miranda rights and you started talking about how it doesn't always pay off to be honest in a relationship. Maybe right. there's a relationship Miranda rights. <laughs> That's you know? pretty good. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's it's the sort of thing that needs to be written. I, I didn't have anything for it immediately, but you know, you have the you have the right to remain silent when X, Y, or Z happens in the relationship or something. Uh, you have the right to remain were... silent if a chair breaks when I'm sitting on it. <laughs> <laughs> Any girl you look at will be used against you or something like that. That's good. Uh, and it might be that you should be allowed to invoke Miranda. 
in social settings. Mm-hmm. If you're not comfortable lying, like I'm not a good liar. So instead of lying, I should just be able to invoke Miranda. Mm-hmm. Hey, what'd you think of my poetry reading? I'd like to plead the fifth, uh, actually. <laughs> <laughs> the other idea I had was about the shirt guy. Uh, more examples of how you can be mean after you did the nice thing of giving him a shirt. Like anytime you walk by a shirt store with that guy, you just be like, how are you doing here? Do you need, should we go in? Do you need to stock up or anything? Just because you didn't have it that one time, you know? Yeah. <laughs> or you, you yeah. see him again, you're like, how do you not have a shirt again? What happened to the shirt I gave you? <laughs> <laughs> Look, if you're struggling, like if you've got a problem, we'll talk about it. Uh, I mean, it might be that these really are the same joke. It's just approaching it as talking about people don't want the truth versus approaching it from nice is no good. Yeah, I, I wonder with, with the example you gave with your, your father and your mother, if, if you're like, I tried this, this is what happened. I tried this, this is what happened. So now it's almost, I need to find a middle ground. Yeah. Um, so your your friend who got the check boxes, you just have to give him, you have to add boxes on there and be like, yes, no, is it because I'm of this? Is it because of that? Why? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> your yes, own response. No, maybe in a month if you lost a few pounds. <laughs> no, if not, why not? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> or maybe like an example of um, merging the two is now you have a third example of a friend asking you for the exact same question. And your answer is, ah, that girl sucks. She's stupid. Anyways, I'm going to the gym this weekend. Do you want to come with me? It'd be fun. <laughs> It'd be fun to work out together. Don't you think? Yeah. I found this, I found this, uh, this coupon for an orthodontist. I feel um, like, I don't know. Part of the reason that I think these are these two concepts are basically the same concept and you're proving that that's true with that comment too. It's like, maybe this is a personal problem. Maybe we're doing therapy instead of comedy now. I'm, I'm hearing that and I'm going, <laughs> so just be grow. Like, how is that good? But I, but that's my problem. I'm, like, in a, I'm existing in a world where pe- I'm realizing people want that. People want you to be polite and give them the white lie. Yeah. But there's a, there, I mean, there isn't a, you know, if we're actually talk about it, there is a, an in-between. Where you can right. you could tell them the truth. It's just it's a it's so hard to do to actually convey the information and to and to cater to their sensitivities. Can you guys think of more examples uh, putting you on the spot of when people are really polite and nice, but the situation is just horrendous? The only good ones I could come up with is the bank taking your house or just politicians talking about war or whatever. An example that I, I always think of is when uh, I was in like fifth grade, our middle school was like, we don't call black people black anymore. We call them African-Americans because black is wrong. But they nobody checked in with black people. And uh, people who were Caribbean were like, we're not African-American. <laughs> but they, they just decided that without acknowledging any of them. And so yeah. there was a huge confusing years where, where it was like, I don't know what to say. Yeah, there's <laughs> definitely a part of this that I have, I have thought of how this kind of touches on some parts of wokeness. I'm not like a free speech warrior. Uh, I hope your buttholes didn't get tied up. I'm not, I'm not about to like <laughs> rage against it. Look at Jared's <laughs> microphone. <laughs> <laughs> but I do feel like sometimes that stuff, it like becomes a replacement for being a good person. Yeah, It's I like, agree. Well, you follow these three rules and so you're good and you broke one of these rules, you're bad instead of just being a good person. So that is in there. That's a good, good point. Uh, I have a couple of real thoughts and they're not comedy related, but you asked some real questions. So the first thing was, I feel like even those two examples that you gave don't necessarily feel like politeness in the face of a tragedy. It seems it's a tack. It's a tactic that people use in order to get what they want at bank foreclosing on your house, but they're polite while they do so politicians lying to you. So I don't know if that fits in, in there where there's like a, I don't know if you've ever lost a house, but it's pretty tragic. Of course, it's tragic. <laughs> uh, what I, what I, maybe I'm not getting that across correctly. What I'm trying to say is that it's a tactic on the bank's part. Right. I feel like to... it's a tactic on almost everyone's part. So that's a good gotcha. point. Okay. Because I wasn't sure if you were asking about like just two incongruous things butting up against each other and there's a cognitive dissonance there. Because with the two examples you gave, I don't think there's cognitive dissonance. I think it's planned. They're aware of From it. the jump to, to do this, it, that it's a pure tactic, but it would be fun if there were moments that you just, sh- out of sheer like, I don't know, you're supposed to smile and you're supposed to say nice things, but I'm saying horrible things, you know? That thing kind of makes me laugh as opposed to makes me sad. Um, and yeah, Welcome and- to my comedy. <laughs> uh, Rob, while you're thinking of the uh, the next thing, I had an idea similar oh, to that. Sure. Like um, <clears throat> the when 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 a cop is giving you a parking ticket and they're not nice about it, like maybe that's better. 
Right. You know, it's like at least at least cops are a dick about it when they give you a parking ticket. Yeah, I feel like it would sting more if they were like, "Oh no, sweetie, sorry, I already started writing." <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i think that's you know people have spoken about the southern hospitality in that in that way too where it's just like yeah i mean it's just you know it's the words that you say because you're told to do that but the the thoughts underneath they, they vary completely as well so that was something that was on, i think growing mind. up underneath that might be part of why i feel this so strongly growing up around mm. church ladies telling people they'll pray for them and they just right. mean it in the shittiest way possible. Right. And it's like, I think that might be where this comes from. And, and, and I've talked to a lot of comedians about this joke or this idea. And it might just be that this is this one weird thing that bothers me and no one can relate to it enough. But it feels like there's something there where niceness, it's not bad in and of itself. But when it replaces kindness or genuine goodness, it right. is. Right. I, yeah. I, I love and, that concept to, and to get to the nitty gritty of that would be, would be wonderful. What do you it's, think? It's also sorry, a thing. Me. It's a thing that uh, the niceness allows people to do bad things without any kind of consequence, I guess. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Um, yeah. And then we can. You so know, the niceness sort of is contributing to other things being bad. Well, and I, maybe we should steer away from like big societal problems for a second. The genesis of this joke was, was me saying, I know I'm not nice, but I promise that I'm good. And people identified with that. Not everyone in the crowd, but like just that premise alone, people, some people would start clapping. And I'm like, all right, I'm onto something here where people feel like they know they're a good person, but they also know that they're a little bristly or whatever. Yeah. Where do I go with that? Right. So if, if, if you had gone to your friend's poetry open mic and told him he was great when you know he just talked about brake lights for 15 minutes and nobody was enjoying it, he'd still be doing poetry. But you were kind of an asshole. And now he's he's enjoying himself doing whatever he's doing now. Now he's a doctor. Right. And, our, and we're not friends. You know, it's very lonely. <laughs> but he looks happy. <laughs> and he doesn't need an anesthesiologist because he just has his poems. <laughs> uh, he's starting to wake up. Keep more, more verses. More break lights. Break uh, lights. Let's see. Oh, oh, the break lights. The redness. The... Okay. <laughs> One comedian told me once that um, I was like, well, you know, even the premise, sometimes people were like filling it. So I know there's some there. And one comedian once told me, yeah, all the dads are clapping. You just sound like everybody's dad, you know, like, mm. I don't, it's not my job to be nice to you. It's my job. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. There is, you know, people have mentioned, uh, I've read somewhere before, you know, some tweet or something that it, if you're walking around New York, people might be a little bristly to speak to. Uh, but if you need directions, you know, New Yorkers are like, oh, yeah, wh wh where are you going? You know, they're they're actually quite happy to help um, in the ways that might matter. Um, right. But maybe they're a little brusque. And that's and is that mean? Is that nice? Is that good? Is that bad? I love I would love for you to, to as homework, really do a deep dive into what you think is a nice gesture versus what you think is a good act. And then find the times when those two things do butt up against each other because it would be fun to have a real good list of those things that you're just like this is nice but this is good you know this yeah. is mean but this is bad and then to find nice things that are bad and to find good things that are mean is it would is the sweet spot that's going to be really fun and the more you can do that i think the audience is going to appreciate it but it's it's going to be philosophical to a degree i don't think you're going to be able to avoid that but i i love it i want to see that i want to make one more point if you don't mind the first thing you said about being nice to somebody uh, because they i don't know I, I didn't hear the poetry but i kind of got glitched i think that people uh, I think that support is so, this is a real comment. I think that support is so important for people. I think that th some people do need a kick in the butt, but I think that our brains play tricks on us like 90% of the time and 10% of the time there's, there's, there's reality going on. And it's like someone who feels supported and feels like cared for, loved, heard, appreciated, they might be in the right mindset to go ahead and get better, practice, lose weight, eat right, do the things that they're supposed to do. I mean, at the end of the day, because I used to feel differently about this, but at the end of the day, I don't feel like they're that stupid. They're like, I mean, I'm 350 pounds, but my friend said I'm I'm fine. <laughs> I'm good. I'm lovable, you know? Uh, so there's something to that, too. I think there's a reality to that. Uh, but anyway, that, just, that was a thought. I wish people I had, like... My haircut didn't look that bad. <laughs> perfect example it looks like shit none of your friends would tell you i know uh, i know it does i wish people had like a vulnerability meter 
so you could tell how honest you could be with them. Ooh, that's you know what's <laughs> you know what's interesting. This is somewhat related because all right, so I, you know I have I have crooked teeth. Uh, no, you my, don't. No, you don't, <laughs> Anthony. I'm gonna lose. Don't. You look Stop great. It. Yeah. <laughs> you get a smile more. You don't. Anthony, I, I genuinely straighter than these piano keys. Like <laughs> uh, but but there was a point where my friends stopped making fun of it, and that somehow makes me feel worse. Like it, it's so bad. <laughs> like, did they get more crooked? A, yeah. Like as a kid, you know, like in elementary school, you know, it, it would be a thing or or whatever in high school once in a while. But then as an adult, like almost nobody mentions it. And I'm like, is it, is, is that how bad it is? That well, people I, are afraid to even make fun of me? Like, I can guarantee you for other stuff. that from now on, you're gonna hear it a lot more on the <laughs> show. <laughs> <laughs> That's but isn't that, it's, you know, people have made fun, you know, I've got long hair, I got a dumb mustache, what, I wear big glasses. People make fun mm. of all kinds of stuff about the so way that I look. You can and, change and all three of those things. Yeah. <laughs> no easy. But that's, but that's my point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're afraid that your teeth used to just be stupid teeth, but now they're like special <laughs> needs teeth. And so people are just like, I don't think we can make fun of Anthony's teeth anymore. Like before, I just wonder just... If, if there's a thought process where people are like, no, I can't. That's too, that's too far. <laughs> you know what it is? Was it when you grew the mustache? <laughs> I think maybe they were like, oh, he, he hit it. Did you see how he tried to distract us and anything off the focus? And then he grew his hair out out of those glasses. He really doesn't want us to talk about those teeth. <laughs> Look what he's doing to himself to kind of grow your mustache down further so that it completely covers your mouth. Um, can I ask one more thing or make one more point? I don't even know if it's important. Before you know, it came out, she said the N-word. Uh, we're talking about Paula Dean. Paula Dean and Anthony Bourdain kind of had the same job, which was like cook and be on TV and be a personality. And many people would prefer Anthony Bourdain, but I think everyone would say she seems nicer again until we found out she wasn't, mm. which is sort of my point, mm. but I don't know how to get to that. It's like, we now know through the work that he did over his career and the fact that, you know, it didn't come out about him, that he's probably a better person than her. But if you just showed someone who didn't know who either of them were two clips, Anthony's making fun of his friend, telling him he's a piece of shit. Why don't you get your life together? And then Paul is going, hey, everybody. Just a random person might go, she seems like a nicer person. Yeah, and that, sweet old lady. That bothers me, I guess is what I'm getting you know at. You know what? That bothers yeah. me. <laughs> An asshole is almost always being authentic. And a kind person, you never really know. Right. My mom's very kind and authentic. But I think- What's she right. hiding? I don't know. I bet that's really what it is about, Brett. What the fuck's wrong with my mom? <laughs> Maybe so you don't have to expand to... on that, but that's sort of where my head is at with this. Yeah. Maybe it would be funny if um, you would prefer a person that's being nice to seem very shady about it, <laughs> just so that you know that they're not being sincere. Yeah. Just being yeah. like, did you wipe your feet before you came in? <laughs> <laughs> I I think that the Anthony Bourdain Paula Dean comparison works better than the the banker taking the house. Okay, like what Rob w was getting at. Yeah, that 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 one resonated with me. I think that that's excellent. Okay, um, they're both personalities. People know who they are. Uh, so I think that that exemplifies your point. Great. Yeah. Awesome. And I think people probably still remember it. Maybe there's like a, a more updated reference, but but that type of comparison I think was closer for me to Been getting doing, the... doing the comedy as a southerner for ten years. I finally got a Paula Dean joke. <laughs> <laughs> Let us move on to me. Now we got Brett, but before we do, just want to remind everybody to check out our Patreon, patreon.com slash ITA pod. We got a lot of cool exclusive content on there. The famous high writing challenges. Uh, story time, Halloween specific episode, a lot of good stuff on there. A lot of cool new rewards like discounts to the live shows and things like that. So go check it out. Patreon.com slash ITA pod. And now, Brett Drick. All right. Um, who did that? Did that. <laughs> I gave you that whole long speech. I know. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We are, uh, we are getting into this. Drew is like, man, this is so stressful. I can't believe you do this all the time. This is the least effort we put into the show is the actual... <laughs> jokes <laughs> well drew brought in something that is culturally important and it's you know it seems like it's gonna be a great bit one day we're just like i farts you guys know about <laughs> you guys ever do that 
Uh, see, now you're making me feel bad because I almost went with donkey basketball, and now I wish I would have. Oh, man. <laughs> hey, Can I do donkey basketball for my turn? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pull out a good donkey basketball pick. Uh, I just wrote, there are rules for cheating, and I don't know what that means. <laughs> that's No, that's funny. There are rules for cheating. Yeah, but that uh, yeah, I, I forget what I saw that made me think that, but somebody was explaining the rules of cheating like – it's allowed oh, because of this. I'm like, um, oh, you know what? In a different city and all that stuff. Yeah, and, yeah, that like, stuff like romantic that. Romantic relationships, that, think... that kind of cheating, or taxes? What? You, what? Um, <laughs> or no, this was this was. I hope you're not this relationship about was. cheating in donkey basketball because that <laughs> yeah. would not be acceptable. Yeah. Or yeah. on your taxes. <laughs> Listen, there's no <laughs> rule that says a dog can't play donkey basketball. <laughs> <laughs> it was a fucking llama, Jared. I should have done that, Jared. Oh, man. <laughs> I was not did because I'm like, it's already got funny parts. Let me hit him with the one that I can't do anything with. <laughs> you know what it is? This is it's a little dark. Very few people are able to not be in, in a monogamous situation, but monogamy is also hard. And I think those rules just evolved as a sort of like, look, don't cheat on me. But if you're going to. <laughs> oh, that's what it was. It was uh, somebody was saying my my hall pass, mm. my celebrity. If it was like, if you meet this celebrity and you get an opportunity to fuck them because they're your celebrity crush, you get a pass. It's okay. Mm -hmm. And I was like, cheating can't have rules. It's called cheating. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's just two people kind of going, we really do want to fuck other people, don't we? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, which was a uh, plot line on an episode of Friends. It was. <laughs> High school. <laughs> House oh, Rachel. Dean. I didn't get that part. Is that a Harry Potter reference? What's it is House a Harry Rachel? Potter oh, reference. Yeah. That, that was what threw me too. The mixture of the two didn't mm. seem, it wasn't as pointed and clear. Yeah, if you would have said like Joey 101 freshman year, I would have yeah. been like, yeah, like oh, what house were you in? House Rachel? And I was like, House oh, Ross? Okay. Is ethical non-monogamy, is that like, ha that is basically having rules for cheating, right? It's having, well, I mean, and, and if you were doing that as a joke, yeah, that's funny. But if you're asking me, is that true? No. <laughs> right. Because yeah. the truth is, is that cheating is only, you know, you establish the rules with your partner. And so if the rules consist of sleeping with five celebrities, potentially, then those are the rules. You, you have so you're not cheating. Yeah. Okay. If, you're not so cheating. if you have it's an a easier test. If you have a list of celebrities, does that mean that that couple is like we're open? It'd be funny <laughs> if you we're if poly, you got you to know, like if Jennifer Aniston's we're, around, we're poly. We're, we're, we're poly, but it's really specific. <laughs> it's like a, it's like an open book test. Right? It's like you can cheat on an open book test. That's what cheating in poly would be. It'd be like cheating on an open book test. What about? No, what I said one page of notes. You were on your cell phone. <laughs> What if uh, what if your celebrity cheat list is very loose with the definition of a celebrity? It's like <laughs> she's got five thousand Twitter followers. <laughs> well, do, you have to approve most most of the time, right? That's yeah. like a part yeah. of yeah. it. I, I've heard that joke somewhere before oh. uh, in, in in the sphere. You know, talking about the the cheat list, and then it's like, what about your sister? What about your like? Where it just starts to kind of do that. Um, so I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend that just because I just feel like it's it's out there. Um, At least it's in my brain. Have you guys ever heard uh, people justify their cheating because they didn't break these unwritten weird rules? Or like brag about how, yeah, yeah, we're engaged. We're not married yet. Or uh, I always use a condom or whatever the thing. Right, right, you know right. what I mean? I'm, I'm the only one who played college football and dealt with that culture. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was still my friend. Barely, barely I've, I've met Does it look like I played college football? Time. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking if we if if we had like a monopoly set at my house but to make the game go faster we sort of like nixed certain rules so it was like a little bit more fast paced or something and then I told you about it and you were like that's cheating and I would be like no we just changed the rules our monopoly is this way your monopoly is that way the same thing with monogamy, you know. Oh, mm -hmm. like like when people play pool and they're like, "No, I don't play that. I don't play that." Those exactly. Rules. We don't do ball in hand. We do behind the line. You don't uh, have to. Jared, call I think it's it. called. You don't have to call the shot. I think it's called polyopoly at that point. <laughs> Poly <laughs> polyopoly. Or just, mon I... monopoly. Oh shit! Oh shit! It's both. <laughs> that worked. I was like, "What?" And then I was like, "Monopoly." <laughs> I am only in one polyamorous relationship. <laughs> you guys want to play some poly poly? <laughs> I want to play snooker. <laughs> Polyopoly probably sounds funnier, but mo Monopoly is actually 
better. What did, was it? Monopoly. <laughs> Monopoly. You know what? Here's the joke I actually want to do. Um, <laughs> I find it so funny. I've talked to Jared about this. I find it so funny that uh, conservatives love wordplay and are so bad at it. Like yeah. they consistently <laughs> want to be like, oh, the, the dem tards. That it never is good. The closest they've gotten to a good one is the Democrats, but they capitalize rats. But it still doesn't work because they, they pronounced it. They're just saying Democrats. Yeah, it looks good, <laughs> but it sounds bad like all of their female uh, talking heads. Uh, I know uh, Judge Jeanine Pirro tried to get demon rats going for a oh, while. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it just gets too far. It's, it's, it's way too far. You're changing too so much. so far that it's broken. I don't know if this helps, Brett, but here's where you're right and wrong. You're right. Uh, objectively speaking and then also though you're wrong because look at how much money the people who do that kind of stuff make off of stuff like that that's all judge what that he just mentioned that's all she does is just say things like that and people are like she's brilliant oh yeah but i'm saying i guess what i need to do is i need to come up with some good wordplay right. and show how bad their wordplay is yeah 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 that'd be good like democrats there you go. That's that's already better than anything I've ever <laughs> heard a conservative put out there. <laughs> I would recommend following a bunch of leftists online because they like to shit on the Dems and they're so much fun because they're all like 18 and dying of, you know, poverty or whatever. They're so much funnier than conservatives. <laughs> um, Abomination was very good. Yeah. That, that that was just off. That's off the charts. Good. But, yeah, but that was handed to them. I, I know it was. <laughs> It was so easy, but still oh, ab abomination referring to like our nation. Uh oh, is that what it was? I don't know. I've never heard. What what is the abomination thing? Well, there was a president. Like the, uh, yeah, they named Bill Brett. Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> no, Barack Obama. Oh, abomination. Are you fucking with me? Yeah, yeah. yeah I never heard it before. That's too close. Oh. <laughs> it's too close. Yeah, it's still. I didn't get. I didn't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't even lean into it like i heard it but it wasn't like their rallying cry yeah it should have been because it was excellent this might be but, a little too... but libtard they got behind <laughs> they got behind yes, yes there's no <laughs> even if it was libba retard that would make more sense but like libtard it. there's no crossover in letters or sounds it might it might be uh just like nostalgia but i kind of like libtard <laughs> it, might, it might just be reminding me of my dad or whatever, but I feel. I feel... <laughs> How did that even become? I don't know. You're not supposed to say it anymore. You're supposed to say libevolumentally disabled. <laughs> <laughs> you say libevoli? <laughs> Bentolibly disabled? I have seen that you're not supposed to say it. Bentolib. Oh, I don't. I really don't think you're supposed to say it. I mean, I don't think people are joking when they say that. Mentally um, disabled. You're not supposed to say what? The AOC what? one. This is the thing I was going to say, Brett. Is I don't know if this is too down, too far down the political rabbit hole for you, but similarly to this, where like conservatives will say libtard and like completely rally behind it as though it's a thing, the political sphere of the right right now is so deep in conspiracy theories that unless you are part of that community, nobody knows what you're talking about. Where mm. people, you know, I follow politics and every once in a while people will be like, what about the servers in Paris? And I'm like, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So Biden didn't buy pizza in Paris that one time where, where the servers are? Did Biden buy pizza in, in Paris? I mean, he did. He's, he's, it's His son did. <laughs> what? His son did, and he's got a big dick. <laughs> oh my God. Wait, is that what the Hunter laptop thing is? No, I was making things up, Anthony. Oh. That was all crazy examples. No, he's not, Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> Open your eyes, sheeple. <laughs> Do the research. <laughs> Think for yourself. I thought you were making a Pizza Express joke, like the whole Prince Andrew thing. So that's where my mind went. Well, then, yeah, there's a whole Pizzagate thing also. Yeah. Yeah, yeah someone got shot. See, you're just like saying a random <laughs> thing. No. Someone got shot in a pizza place. It's see, he was just doing a bit, and the reality is more insane than his bit. So good luck, Brett. Have fun. <laughs> My bit is it's, just it's that quirky that they don't know how words work. They murder people in I'm, pizza shops. I'm not saying it's not working. I'm saying they are bad at it. <laughs> dying and you're like libtard doesn't work <laughs> exactly that is for me the bit i'm like no i don't i have no interest in the politics i don't care whether you're right whether you're wrong whether you're crazy your wordplay sucks 
That, that, it that does. That's a great approach. Except, I like that approach. Their wordplay sucks, except for when it comes to writing laws, because they're able to get the, the wording in there to make things that should be illegal legal. Like there's all kinds of new the, voter like, suppression. Yeah, enhanced uh, interrogation mm-hmm. instead yeah, of torture. All kinds of, so that's where they're really great at wordplay. Well, that's just, because, wordplay. that's just because uh, whether you're good or bad, you can hire a lawyer. Wait, wait, <laughs> yes, but they're often conservative. Lawyers. That could be your bit. You could tell them to do that. You'd be like, you guys don't always fuck this up. You wanted mm. to torture people. You knew you weren't allowed to, and someone wrote down enhanced interrogate. Whoever that guy is, yeah, yeah. Let him get him to name it. What would be like a funny thing that you could say? Like you didn't call it torture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you wanted to do torture. You knew you could. You got to call yeah. it something else. Yeah, the I'm same. I'm sure one of you said torture. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> or you could you could lump it together. And be like the same people who came up with adv- enhanced interrogation also came up with libtard. It's like how is that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the same group of people, <laughs> you know, who were able to bend and twist the English language just in such a way to make torture sound passable also came up with demon rats. Demon rats. <laughs> demon rat. It's not even a good band name. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that there's part of them that like they know though? Like to me, if every time I was writing demon rats, I would be like, eh, it just doesn't. Uh. Yeah. You know, what reminds she me has of- dumb fans. Yeah, it, it reminds me of uh, when you get a, an email scam. They're terribly written, and they're just really just bonkers. Like, who would respond to this? And that that's built into the strategy to send out email scams that are not good because they're trying to weed out people who would probably be savvy enough to mm. actually not go through it. Oh, I never, I've never heard that before. That's interesting. So in the very first text or the very first email. it's like, email, I got to delete an email. <laughs> <laughs> Should I stop talking to this guy? <laughs> they, they send it so it just kind of looks like nonsensey so that they don't, they don't waste all their time. You know, it's already kind of weeding out. They're only looking for like the dumbest, you know, or the most gullible of the, of the population. So there's maybe there's something there to that, even though it's a kind of a lot of... Uh, uh, educating the audience. I did just get a friend request from somebody and uh, then they messaged me and they were like, hey, I saw you on the list of people who uh, were getting the packages. And I was like, oh, well, I haven't ordered anything. So, uh, and she was like, yeah, the packages of money. Did you get yours yet? And I was like, oh, oh, the packages of money. Yeah, I got mine. And she was like, <laughs> uh, Wait, are you sure you got it? And I was like, "Yep, I got it. Yep. Thanks, thanks for checking in." Normally, I'd be mad that they were showing my my name to other people who uh, aren't part of the delivery service. But obviously, you have a good heart. You're making sure I got it. So thank you. And then she's they like, actually, she's just not responding. Gave me too much this time, so yeah. if you let me know where you are. I can give you extra. It was great. She just stopped responding once I said yes. <laughs> but I think they know, Brett. I think that when you write Demon Rat, you know it's dumb, but you know that it's what they want. Mm. Like uh, Larry the Cable Guy. Dan Whitney knew that that was a goofy character, but it worked. So he mm-hmm. kept doing it, you know? Yeah, can I kind of ask you uh, a Southern perspective on that. What does the R in get her done? What does that word stand for? Is it the, get her? her? Is it her? Okay. Get her done. Get her done. And getting her done, what does that mean? She's like, ready? Get get it over with? What, what does it mean? Uh, yeah, d- just do it, whatever the task is. We will often um, gender tasks. Mm. And trucks uh, and cars. Cars are often she and trucks Sure, are sure. Okay, trucks. makes sense for me now. So getting her done is just, you know, getting getting to it, getting after uh, it. I got to go rewatch his stuff now. Yeah, well, he's from <laughs> Oklahoma. Uh, it's funny when you like know that. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, now I think he's great. <laughs> Uh, I think he's funny. I just think he's horrible. Uh, oh yeah, actually, the original uh, blue collar comedy tour is great. When they're doing their tightest stuff and they're all together, it's awesome. It's really, really funny. Yeah, Run White's so great. Yeah, I loved hearing Drew you use terminology that is very today to describe. You're like we all will often gender our tasks. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> well, I can read, Rob. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's, just, it's not just reading. It's the ability to bridge this gap. <laughs> and and Speaking? Yeah, I can do that too. Yeah. <laughs> I think he's just saying... But between at the same time. It's crazy. Between the, the Southern slang and the way you're describing it, there's a huge dichotomy. <laughs> uh, you're completely right. I was talking last night with the two guys I tour with and another guy named Mark who writes... Uh, he's a writer. Uh, you guys know what 
people who write it. And uh, <laughs> well, I didn't want you to be like, oh, he writes? I was like, no, that's what is that, Southern it. slang? <laughs> <laughs> he writes things that were once wrong? Like uh, that. We were talking about that viral tweet. You guys might have seen it because you're not on like Southern Twitter. But this dude was like, if you will say progressive things in a Southern accent, you will go viral. And we were all like, oh, no, they're on to us. <laughs> uh, but he, he went on in the thread and he said something at the end of like, we just don't, we're just shocked no matter how woke or whatever we are. We're just shocked that you're smart. We're just shocked that you're smart. I'm sorry. I was t texting with him and I was like, I know that's true. And I know it's how we make money, but it still makes me mad. And literally, as I hit send, my friend whose house I was at was like, you want to hold the possum now? And then I was like, yeah. And I put a possum on my shoulder. <laughs> and I, I took a picture of it and I was like, you know what? Never mind. <laughs> we are just as smart and capable as anybody else. Now let's yeah. go mudding. <laughs> Mud is fun. <laughs> <clears throat> mudding does look fun. Oh, wow. that's, great. <laughs> okay. oh, that's great. I don't care. I don't care what elite university you go to. Anybody will put a possum on their shoulder. Yeah, I don't care who you are. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's funny. I don't care who you are. <laughs> that's his other tagline. <laughs> Give me a fucking possum. That's great. Give me a fucking you know, possum. It's, I'll do it today. It's, so it's funny. funny. I, you know, I knew what possums were, but I always think of a raccoon. <laughs> and you showed me that, and I was like, "Oh, I've seen those." You know, Anthony, not, like, those statements like... don't really go together. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, you always hear about possums, and I thought, well, I guess I thought I knew what they were, but it was, I, I it's didn't. It's also your deadpan stoner <laughs> go... delivery. You know, I know what possums are. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm not saying I don't know what a cat is, but I did point to that thing that was pooping in the litter box and say, "That's a cow." <laughs> Possums and raccoons are pretty similar. <laughs> except but, except so in how they look and act. <laughs> raccoons can line. get rabies. I don't know. Yeah, that's how you tell them that's how you tell them apart. <laughs> you give them some rabies to see how they react. Yeah. <laughs> and if they float, then you burn them. <laughs> Anthony's able to say stupid things in this New York accent. <laughs> <laughs> right. He sounds like a stoner. <laughs> I think this is a pretty good segue to move on to Anthony, guys. What do you guys think? Oh, yeah. Let's take it over to old Crooked Teeth. <laughs> <laughs> good old Anthony and his Hillary Clinton teeth. Now, Anthony, when you read... <laughs> That's you still better than any pun that a, a, a conservative has done. <laughs> Can you check uh, the words around your teeth? Is that like <laughs> what? What? When you talk, you whistle. It's weird. <laughs> like, what it's was like... that, Anthony? <laughs> <laughs> what were you trying to say there? Uh, let's get know. to looking like it looks like an old graveyard, Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Anthony just got done eating a watermelon through a picket fence. Go ahead. <laughs> All of the years that people weren't making fun of your teeth for, we're getting them in on right now. Just, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you made me realize that might be why I'm friends with comedians. Is they're the group of people who like need their friends to make fun of them. So it's like, I'm about to be me. <laughs> <laughs> well, but it is weird to know that people are probably not doing it because it would be too mean if they did. Yeah, it's like I've I've heard from people That's like worse. from uh, when there was a comic doing crowd work. Uh, a lot of times they'll avoid somebody who is in a wheelchair or something like that. Um, and Jesus, those people how often... are these teeth. <laughs> <laughs> those All people right. feel left out. Uh, so when a comic does make fun of them, it's just so great for them. Yeah, that's actually in the new ADA. They're writing it right now. Mm. I'm just you gotta make, make fun of. You gotta make fun of if you're doing crowd work. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now it's time for Anthony Capfer. Anthony flosses his teeth with a weed whacker. Capfer. <laughs> <laughs> but even when I would do those roast shows, it was pretty rare that people like, would mention you. Like, <clears throat> yeah, and I don't know why. That seems uh, like that. That that to me is like you've done enough distracting thing on the roast show. There's no. They, Nobody's they holding back. They're gonna eat them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they never. They maybe they just didn't hadn't seen you smile a lot. They didn't know you very well. Like, I am pretty depressed most of the time. Because <laughs> I have met you, but I gotta be honest, this is the first time I've seen them teeth. I think. 
Okay, okay when you call them teeth. teeth, I think that's too far. <laughs> <laughs> With an F. <laughs> <laughs> them <Okay>. teeth. <laughs> God damn, son. Okay. okay. <laughs> Where you go to the dentist? Tire shop? <laughs> tire shop? That's what he said. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right, I have a, a joke here about uh, let's see about smiling. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I, say, I know it's not about brushing. <laughs> I brush. Yeah, they're white. They're white. It makes them easier yeah. to see. <laughs> they're, they're like white trash. That's how white. They are. <laughs> <laughs> it's hurt more coming from Drew. Uh, <laughs> I do wonder, you know, because being like a native New Yorker, people would always be like, what, really? You're from here? I wonder if it was because I have crooked teeth and it's like, I thought for sure you were from <laughs> Oklahoma. It, it's, it's definitely like a class thing for sure. I mean, I'm going to be yeah. honest, not even joking. This is probably the first time I've ever been on a podcast that my teeth weren't the worst. <laughs> <laughs> I know that sounds well, I'm funny. I'm from New York <laughs> City, but we were poor. I was right. born in the Bronx. It's class. You know? it's, I just it, don't it, think I... I I just see what like when you smile, and maybe it's because my monitor is small, but I just don't see crooked teeth. I don't think about it. I just see like white. Yes. And maybe 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 your white mustache bricks. like li lines it well. I don't I don't know. It looks like you unless you were to call attention, I were to look in closely. I wouldn't think. Oh, Anthony's got super crooked teeth. Well, not all of them are like in completely the wrong place. But like this, one, there's one here that's like pushed back so much that at certain angles it looks like it's missing. Guys, we we got to get to the material. Anthony uh, Picasso <laughs> mouth. Uh, <laughs> that's my this favorite is one. The that is my uh, favorite. One of the guys I tour with has an extra tooth. Extra. Yeah, he's like it's up here, like a baby tooth that they never pulled because he was poor, and we call it an inconvenient tooth. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> All right. I didn't know you could keep a, uh, keep the baby ones in. I didn't know either. I did. Yeah, he was his family was so against abortion that didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here's here's the this is um, I think it's more of a concept. I'm not sure of the exact wording. When I sell uh, stuff that I don't need anymore on eBay, uh, I like to think that the people that are buying it are just fans of mine, uh, and they want collectibles. So I just autographed my old lamp. <laughs> <laughs> I like That's that a fun. lot. <clears throat> yeah, especially in the context of a set that you're doing. You know, everyone knows you're on stage. Everyone knows you're a comic. <laughs> You know, they know you want fans, so I think that's that's just so fun. That's that's already if you do that joke that you have about um you may have seen me in a that a movie if you'd ever seen that movie or I forget how yeah. the joke goes. But oh, basically yeah. like like nobody's ever seen the movies that you've been in. That would like that would go very, very well with that. Mm. Uh, I was just thinking about other examples of people asking you for things. Like when a homeless person asks you for money and you're like, this happens all the time. Uh, we should make that too. <laughs> that's excellent. Yeah, I would like to see more examples. That was a great one. That, that's uh, really that's a fun one. bit. It's really fun. Yeah, I, I guess I, I would want to stay away from the one that I, I've seen a lot, which is like going to a restaurant. And, uh, what is, actually, what is it? I can't remember. Something at a restaurant. <laughs> Yeah, don't do the it. restaurant one. People yeah, think about so your good. teeth. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what about, uh, I, w I will, one, I don't know, no suggesting question. How did you arrive at LAMP? I know it can't be super silly. If it's too silly, it takes away from the funness of the joke. But I almost feel like LAMP might be too mundane, but maybe I'm wrong. Oh, yeah, I guess it was just, I was, it was sort of random. LAMP doesn't have to be the, what it is. I like, I like LAMP. I think furniture is going to work for that. You know, you could say dresser, you could say couch. Yeah. yeah, autograph. My desk is funny. a good comedy word. Mm -hmm. What do people desk? sell on eBay? Desk. desk, desk. Oh, desk. Well, people sell. You know, I've been buying records uh, lately. I've been buying, rec but I was. But thinking, people autograph records, though. Yeah. So I guess that was part of. Me. I just bought some Ethernet cables on eBay. From a person like used. No, well, they were new ones, but you could buy. You don't have to buy used <laughs> stuff on eBay. Yeah, but he wouldn't be selling new stuff on eBay. I, you were asking what people buy on eBay. I'm telling you what I bought on eBay. Oh, I'm sorry. What do people buy on eBay used from other people? I thought that part was implied. 
Um, well, maybe for valedictorians they are Drew, but not for these <laughs> dumb dumbers. I understood what you meant. Thank you, Rob. I don't know why my brain went there, but when you said used, like you know how there are certain like perverted communities they want women's used underwear yeah. or socks or anything. No, I'm not familiar with this, Jarrett. <laughs> mm -hmm. You don't know why your brain went there either. Maybe talk to your puppet. When you said you bought used Ethernet cables, that's where I went. It's like you sick fuck. <laughs> the girls are using make, the, make the microphone say it. <laughs> Make the microphone call him a sick fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Jarrett, please make your microphone call Brett a sick fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the mic has to say it into you so we can hear it. <laughs> Anthony, uh, I, I like I would play around with that. I like desk. That's a good Okay. That's because so so name. lamp is not the. A funny I'm not, I don't know if it is or not. I was just trying to. Oh, I love lamp. Think of it. I love, <laughs> I love lamp. Favorite. I love Lucy remake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I I also like well like you know you could slip that into like a, a merch conversation if if you wanted to go like you could say talking about like well I don't have merch but I am selling things on eBay because uh, I got a little extra bunch of stuff in my apartment I'm trying to get rid of. Um, so if you want, I don't have whatever these things, but I do have, and then you can start oh, listing right. off the things that you're trying to get rid of. And then you'll autograph them. And, and then, then you'll autograph them. Yeah. I love oh. this. I love this as the sort of like coda to the joke where you're like, you know, I don't, I don't have merch, but you can just go on my eBay and then you can be like, I'll sign my dresser. Be a good call oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was interesting that it re reminded you of one of my other jokes because I, there, there. I don't think I brought it to the show, but I, I have this thing that I used to do where it was like, uh, uh, I'm at a weird point in my career because a record label put out my album, but whenever I autograph it, it's actually worth less money than before. <laughs> um, so I wonder if that it should actually be part of that joke. And uh, when did your friends stop making fun of your album? Same time as you too. <laughs> <laughs> that definitely um, connects. Yeah, which I forgot about. So I guess I was just re <laughs> rewriting that old joke. <laughs> that I forgot the worst about. part about the album is that uh, it's a digital album, so you just keep signing your monitor. <laughs> <laughs> Here's my old laptop for 10 bucks. <laughs> Sign a it, woman's phone one night. <clears throat> it's, a digital, it's a digital signature, so you just keep on just, just typing in your name. <laughs> Clicking, I agree. <laughs> I, I don't know, I I don't know how you feel about callbacks, but if you did that at the end as fake merch, it would murder me. Like some some comics really just don't want to do callbacks, but I love them. If you did that joke and then later pulled out your phone and started reading to me what you actually have for sale, yeah. oh, especially man. if I could go get on your eBay and find it, like I think I think that'd be cool. You could sell a bunch of stuff that way. Brett sells candy and garbage. Ah. Wait, so you Hey, I sell candy. I only sell garbage if I'm out of candy. <laughs> so you're saying that if I just list all of my actual merch on my eBay, that people No, would don't buy actually it? don't list merch. List yeah, I think it should be a chair. things you want to sell in your apartment. Yeah. And it would be in yeah. in at that point you could get a little weirder with it because the jokes established so you don't have to be as concrete as lamp. By the end of it you could be this bowl I found. It was a beautiful day when I found the bowl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You could sell your couch on eBay for like five thousand dollars and say that you'll sign it. And if you get yeah. a crazy enough fan, exactly. you exactly. could afford a way better couch. I would I would put <laughs> I a bunch of this. actual garbage on <laughs> like get an eBay account, put a bunch of shit on there, charge a ridiculous amount that nobody would ever pay. <laughs> this is how fun this bit is. We're like, listen, my homework yeah, was study guy. philosophy. Yours is like start a new business. <laughs> <laughs> But you're saying get a bunch of garbage and then just no, no, no. You keep have it garbage. in my apartment <laughs> indefinitely. <laughs> Open your eyes and look around your apartment. Are your teeth in the way? Can you not see? <laughs> they're, grow they're growing up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah, that is not the issue. <laughs> So That's yeah, they, they just list the things you have in your apartment. All right. <clears throat> Any, anybody else had anything for Anthony? Otherwise, I think let's move on to Leedy. Hey, Leedy, how are you? This might be my favorite episode I've gotten to draw so far. This was so much wow. fun. So I have oh, about, nice. a, wow. about a million. Okay. Well, first up, I have uh, 
Look at my mic. Or is it a mic? (laughs) (laughs) That was my favorite bit. (laughs) I got to wear a so we can tell me and Rob apart in these pictures. (laughs) (laughs) And I have a, hmm. Which is the possum? (laughs) You're just not quite sure. (laughs) And then, um. You couldn't really tell. Oh, sorry. I can read and speak. <laughs> sorry, wait. I can read and speak. Well, it was wow. so much more impressive. Now. <laughs> that was great. I apologize. <laughs> Should have talked and rolled. <laughs> <Too old. laughs> He's an old man. <laughs> then I have... What is a purple nipple? <laughs> the dictionary defines. And I stopped. No. I have a uh, fuck conservatives. That's my thing. <laughs> what a great likeness. <laughs> Excellent. Great like the Mike or Jared? Mm-hmm. I, I can't, oh, I can't, I can't tell the two apart. <laughs> great likeness. And likeness. I have a. Uh, you guys know what funny is. You guys don't need me. <laughs> That's great. And I have a, am I good, Jarrett? Did that happen while I was away? I don't remember that. It was, uh, that was in the very, very beginning. beginning. Yeah. It might not even be in the actual podcast. Oh, yeah, you were, you were walking away. Jarrett was uh, asking if his sound was good. <laughs> and then said his own name, but it sounded like he was talking to himself. <laughs> <laughs> then I have um, eat fruit and fuck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Beautiful. That's, That's great. great. And I have mm, Ethernet. <laughs> <laughs> looks so sad. I, it does look wow. sad. That was unintentional. It's supposed to be I more point of out a... That I, I... I want, I want to point out that I appreciate that you don't go in order, so I don't start getting the, the, the vibes that the things start and end soon. Oh. Who knows? I don't know what's going to happen next. It's great. Well, uh, I only have two left, so okay. broke the suspense. He, he meant that. It wasn't a passive-aggressive thing. Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> Just to be clear. <laughs> Super sincere. No, I like it. I like that it's, it's from all of other show. It's not like, oh, we're getting, we're wrapping up because that one was about Anthony's yeah. bit. Or oh, something. yeah. I, I yeah. try to go in order of funniest, or at least funny to funniest. I don't always succeed because I don't always have time to figure them out oh, interesting. radical two <laughs> <laughs> i like that the second to last one is radical two yeah, yeah. Well, she said she only had two left maybe she didn't have that one <laughs> and then Just last that one, but not least two. I've oh, sort of like switched to digital lately, so I have Ooh. science. Ooh. <laughs> There's so much science. <laughs> wow, look at all that look science. science. <laughs> look at all the science. There's oh, science on the wall. Science on the frontier. In the <laughs> oh, my God. That's awesome. Thank you Thank so you. much, Lady. These That's were fantastic. Great. Wonderful. Where can we find you, Lady? Uh, I have a Patreon, Patreon slash Lady Corbin, patreon.com slash Lady Corbin. I also have a website, LadyCorbin.com, wherein I have cum stained couch for sale. <laughs> uh, Anthony will sign that. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> <laughs> and I have an Instagram, at Art for My Heroes. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much, Lady and Drew. Thank you so much for coming on. This is great. You were you were such a fantastic guest. Uh, where can people uh, find and follow you? At Drew Morg Comedy. All right. And anything specific you want to plug? This will come out in like two years. Oh uh, no, then I hope okay. we do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks again for coming on. Uh, we hope you had a, as good of a time as we did. Thank you. Thanks, y'all. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Check back for more individual clips and full episodes every Monday. Or you can listen wherever you enjoy podcasts. If you want to support the show and get access to special fan-only content, go to patreon.com slash itapod. That's itapod as in, is this anything podcast? Relevant links in the description. Take care.